All right, and without further ado, wait no longer. It is time for X Men Arcade with L Rock Six One Seven. Good afternoon. I think we are live. How's it going? It's a going. How's it going with you? Great. I'm so excited for this. Appreciate it, Moon. And appreciate you all, Calithon. Thank you all for being here. <clears throat> this awesome weekend, raising some money for the Bell Project. Hope everyone's having a stellar start to their weekend on this lovely Friday. So, this is my third time getting to participate in a Calithon event, and I'm very happy to be back. Uh, the Calithon crew is just tremendous, and I always love the causes they're out to contribute for, especially during times like this. So, I am Elrock617. That's how you can find me on Twitch. Today, uh, we're going to be running one of my more nostalgic arcade games with an unofficial category. The primary speedrun categories for this game involve credit feeding and mutant power spam, which you're going to see a little bit of that in the run that I'm performing, but it's a little bit more... Um, it's a little bit more fleshed out. Plus, my goal is always I want to make sure that I can finish the game on one credit. It's otherwise known as a 1cc, which means I put in one quarter and hope to finish the game that way. In the event that that fails, I'm going to finish the run. Don't worry about it. But the strats I'm going to be showing off are those that are intended and designed to make sure that I can try to finish the game in, in one credit. So while there will be a lot of speed options and a lot of speed, pat speed um, I guess we'll go speed strats that I'm going to be utilizing, if any any event that I feel like I'm under a lot of pressure, I'm probably going to have to slow it down and play safe. So, let's go ahead and pop our coin in. And coincidentally, Storm is the best character we have in this game, which I think is amazing. So let's go ahead and get started at 3, 2, 1, go. Storm. Okay, so... Some of you actually may not have seen this version of the game, even for those of you that have played this before. I've been playing it since I was nine, and I didn't know this version existed until I was in my 20s or 30s, I don't remember. Uh, this is the two-player Japanese version of the game. This is actually very significant for a couple of reasons. One, in the Japanese version of this game, you actually have health ups as well as ways to get additional mutant power stocks. So you can kind of just plug and choke those away. As you saw, I take out the, took out the group of enemies there that has some of those those enemies laying in wait. I'm getting ready to do it again right here. These pink sentinels you don't see in other versions of this game, but they will be showing up a lot here, dropping health, dropping stocks. And I'll talk more in a second, but I gotta finish Pyro off here. Bear with me. Pyro's not a hard boss, but he is really annoying. He loves to jump, which doesn't really, but Storm, then Storm doesn't have very good air control, ironically enough. She, um, she kind of has to work to keep him grounded. So, as you saw there, I was just able to poke him to death. So, we'll move on to our next stage. Here's the other significant thing about the Japanese version of this game. So, we have a basic moveset, like what you see in the beat em up. You can hit things, you can dive on things, you can jump kick things. I mean, you, it's it's stuff that you've seen in a lot of in pretty much any film scroller like this. Uh, come back here. In this game, however, or at least this version of the game, you have an expanded moveset, which means you have inputs for moves that can be done using diagonal directions. For those of you that have played fighting games with directional annotations based on numbers, in every character except Nightcrawler's case in this game, you have both 3A and 9A, which are both down forward and up forward respectively. I refer to it as A because it's the attack button. Storm's down forward A is this really long-range poke with her scepter that has really high priority, it has insanely fast recovery speed, and it's essentially the move I'm going to be using most of the time if I need to be able to get an advantage. Missed that turret, that was unfortunate, we're going to blow the ball down real quick. That mutant power is necessary, if we don't use it, we go to the top floor, and the top floor is way scarier than the bottom floor, so I know, was hoping to throw that guy. Broke, it comes out kind of randomly, it's very, very useful when it happens, but unfortunately you can't rely on it. I will go for setups on it, but it may not always work out. So I'm going to get these guys up here. One drops a stock, one drops a life. Or drops health, sorry. That'll work. Alright, on to our second boss. This is Blob. 
Bob's normally really annoying, but that's because he has really degenerate stuff like an invincible throw that he can do on wake up and at really ridiculous ranges. You really can't beat it unless she's been to mutant power to break up. The advantage with Storm is that she doesn't have to interact with him. She just gets to play at mid range and just kill him. Not hard at all. Like, he actually just cannot actively beat that move. Just keeps him out forever. Right on to stage three. We're going to be seeing a new enemy here. We've seen a lot of Sentinels. Very, very common for this game. I don't know how they got Sentinels down to seven feet tall, but works for the game, I suppose. There we have these Crocs that I believe are supposed to be inhabitants of the Savage Land. Anyway. They're pretty annoying. They only have... One, the uh, Crocs in this stage only have one move in their move set, but it's a really, really good move. It's a jumping tail swipe they can do that out-prioritizes just about anything you can do. And it does two damage, and we only have ten health, so we want to make sure we can avoid those. We'll let these flowers spawn. These guys won't be too big of a deal. Okay, so for our last bit of mutant power here, I'm going to line these guys up and take this. Take him. Go ahead and take care of him before I move on. I don't want him disrupting anything. Cool. Thing, but okay. Sometimes off screen hits work out a little bit too well. That was nice. A few more Sentinels to go to here. From here, we're just going to be seeing a few more Crocs and mostly Sentinels. But we do have a mid boss. It's the first stage that has a mid boss, unless you count the wall from the previous stage. Here we have this Wasp to throw a tornado. And the cool thing about the Japanese version is when you hit an enemy, they don't go flying off screen like they do in other versions. So they just soak up all kinds of damage that you throw at them. This guy drops a stock. We'll go ahead and snag that. I'm gonna play keep out with these clowns. That storm is just too good. <laughs> she is just insanely good in this game. This is another area for mutant power use because we had to fight three procs otherwise, and quite frankly, no thank you. Let's go ahead and wipe all this out. This segment could probably go a little bit faster if I spend a mutant power, but I'd rather be safe. If I take damage, that's gonna make the next couple segments a lot more difficult. So instead what we're gonna do is line these guys up, kill them. Go ahead and Line these guys up and kill them. Now we get everyone's favorite meme. Chime along at home if you know the words. <laughs> Welcome to Ply. What about all those clowns? And similarly to what we have with Blob, Wendigo is... A fairly long range character, but he doesn't have range that can beat this out. He does have one attack that's really scary, where he does a jumping lunge. I'm not too worried about it, because I can usually beat it out, but sometimes he gets off axis, and he just... We get hit, and he doesn't, so... I think that should be it for number of cycles. One more. Alright, there we go. That fight wires down to nine cycles exactly, so what my goal is, I want to just poke him in the knees for the first seven cycles until he's down, and then I can finish him off with two tornadoes. And of course we get a health refill at the beginning of the next stage. All the better to throw tornadoes with my pre I didn't want to kill this green guy, but I did want to kill this guppy. So we're gonna just do a little bit of this. Honestly, this stage is one of the more difficult stages in the game. The boss is not that bad, especially for Storm, but the stage itself has a lot of hazards. That was an incredible time for some iframes. Too good, even. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and kill this guy. Take a nine minute speed there. I'm also gonna be really cautious about when I use mutant powers, just because there's so many segments where things can go wrong and I can take damage, and losing a life here is pretty bad. We're gonna stay up here, let those guys get run over, because why not? Now I'll throw one, because that's just too many enemies. Uh, I've actually been discussing the differences through the run. There's a lot of differences. It can't really be boiled down to just like a couple sentences. You can see health ups, that's one thing. No, go away. Probably shouldn't have grabbed that health so soon, I didn't quite need it. I do have a one cycle I'm gonna use on this bat here, I hope. Okay, I didn't quite get that. If you can hit the bat three times with a tornado you throw, it kills it in just one swing. So I only got two hits. The timing of it's kinda hard. Um, I actually am. Wanting to test it up and make sure I can get a frame count on it. It's probably about between four to six frames. I've got it sometimes, about 50 50 on it, but 
you only lose like a little bit of time if you miss it. Maybe like three or four seconds or so. Oh, okay. Don't want to throw there. These guys all pile up in the same segment, and the last thing I want is a throw. Throw those grand iframes, but I'd rather just group enemies together and just beat them down. Keep it going. No party up there, it's all down here. Good grouping there. Alright, we're gonna crowd these guys. I wanna make sure they're all out of the door before I do anything. Oops, good anti-air there. Then I'm gonna do the same over here. Like that. Oof, nice throw. Samuses are gonna give me problems if I don't do this. Uh, just always down. This is one of the advantages of the Japanese version. You get a lot more OTG hits, and those are very valuable. Because in the U in US and Euro versions, you knock them off screen. You don't want that. Away. Hopefully I can throw this guy on the right. Very good. That was actually really lucky, and I'm happy about that. Okay, back to full health. So we can fight Nimrod here. For any non-Storm character, Nimrod's actually a pretty big threat, but Storm, of course, with her absurd range, is really not going to have too many problems here. Sometimes that can happen, and it's like, whatever, because he's going to stalk, and I'm just going to knock him down again. The iframes on bosses hasn't really been exactly determined in this game quite yet, though it is something I'm going to be investigating for too long, because I think it's important for being able to bring rationale to how the boss fights work. It's one of the more challenging things about the run. Because sometimes you need to make sure that you're able to close in on cycles properly. So we rescued Kitty. And now we get to move on to rescuing Charles Xavier. Probably doing something corrupt like you shouldn't have been doing. Okay, so this part's a little finicky. I just came up with this strat yesterday. I'd rather just not deal with that Samus. Oh, that's not good. Okay, I actually have to wait this out. Bear with me. Boo boos were made. Not want to get hit by that turret, but I can uh, I can play this out. We're gonna be okay. A little scary there, though. There was a chance that those turrets would have trapped me in that spot, and that's like the exact opposite of anything you would ever want. I'm gonna make you guess. Yep. So group them. Last quick group of enemies here. Let's see if I can kill one, so I can um, hit this in hell. Okay, there we go. Uh, no. Alright, that'll clear out our first half of the stage. Another mid-boss we have here in Emma Frost, also known as the White Queen. Emma can be pretty annoying. She has only two attacks, but they're both really, really good and both very high in damage. She also can just sometimes decide she has iframes in order to utilize one of her attacks, which is essentially just a counter-attack. It's a chop, and it has like a built-in fade, which is obnoxious. For Storm, you can use her 9A attack, the slow poke, to cover the hole. Just kill these things that come out. Very, very efficient. We're gonna move on. Let these guys show up. Um, that's pretty bad luck. Oh, I didn't want to hit that guy yet. Not a good use of health there, but we're still good. Uh, actually, I'm gonna do this. That makes more sense. Too many enemies there. Oh, okay. This thing. All right, I've got three mutant powers I can use. Another difference about the Japanese version, you have these mutant power stocks that you can utilize. You have them in the US version as well, but the reason they differ here is because in this version of the game, stocks are spent before life, which actually matters quite a bit for the speed run, believe it or not. So I got to use one there in addition to six life. Once you spend all your stocks, this requires three life for mutant power from there. And that's how we drain and then refill our health with those health ups we're getting. One last little quick wave of sentinels that are to cure those bone breakers. Bone breaker segment isn't that bad. We'll be seeing a lot more of them later, but for the initial outing, I guess we'll call it. Not terrible. Juggernaut. So here we have the other meme of this game, Juggernaut with a gun. Because whose idea was it to give Juggernaut a gun? Pretty absurd. Essentially, this fight really has to be played at range. His attacks are kind of scary, especially his shoulder charge. That's the one I'm primarily looking to avoid, because that move has absolutely no startup. Like, if he decides to do it and he's right in front of me, I'm getting hit by it. It does three damage, and I don't want that. He can also use the gun, which the gun has incredibly slow startup time, so I'm not as worried about that. But he also has a punch that can interrupt our combos, which is obnoxious. Like, exactly like that. Perfect. Right on keeping that. Uh, knock him down one more time. 
I'm gonna sit tight on Dalton here real quick. Because I don't want him hitting me. Okay, cool. I'll take that. Didn't get to use my last MP, but I'll take that. MP is just short term I use for mutant power. So, let's go ahead and move on. This is. Go ahead. Our, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna ask if I had time to sneak in a quick donation. Of course, go right ahead. All right, it's just a ten dollar donation. Uh, no comment from DJ Tatsujin. Thank you so much for that. I know that person. Thank you, DJ Tatsujin. Very consistent supporter of my stream and a great arcade streamer himself. Okay, so this stage is really hard. It's also really short, so that is the one advantage. But there's just a lot that we have to work through. I am going to be using powers here shortly. Uh, was I did not want to get fireballed there. These Sentinels have increased health. The Sentinel health overall increases in stage... I believe it first increases in stage 3 and then now again in stage 6. So stage 6 and stage 7 Sentinels have the same amount of health. That's a lot. I... Ooh, that's not good. I despawned that health up. Alright, I gotta play some safety here. You're gonna be seeing me hit a lot of things and not throwing a lot of wind. Complete flub on my part, but this is recoverable. I just have to play smart. Same as they're gonna spawn, I wanna hit them. Ooh, didn't really want that, but okay. Thankfully, we do have a mutant power stock coming up here. That'll make things a little bit easier for the next segment. Need to make sure these Samus are dead first. They're my top priority. They can just zone way too well for really long ranges, but I really don't have the way to beat them at. Uh, okay. This is weird, but alright. Can't kill anything. I should probably go ahead and just kill that pink guy. I don't want to be able to stubborn about that. Oh, that's not good. Did not mean to spawn this. Okay, this is actually bad. Okay, we recovered. Our health is terrible, but we'll manage, I think. Ooh, this guy's controlling me hard, but I also didn't fight that pink one correctly. Okay, spawn some bone breakers. We're gonna group them together and kill them all at once. We got one more. You can spawn all four at once, but I've never been able to successfully kill all four at once. This last pink one here has a health up, which I desperately need right now. But I'm not gonna be too much of a hurry to get it. We'll get it now. Wasn't too much of a hurry because I thought I could just take him out, but it was still not correct because one of those fireballs hits me and I would have been dead. On to our boss, who I used to think was the hardest boss in the game and might actually still be. This is the Living Pharaohs, as they're known. And this actually is an X-Men villain. Because I'll get a lot of questions about that. Uh, that was finicky, but okay. So you have to fight three of these clowns. First two you fight at the same time, and it's the hardest phase of the fight by like a lot. They really don't have a lot of opportunities to be invincible like the third one does, but having to get yourself flanked by both these guys is not fun. I'll spend the mutant power there for sure to get rid of both. Only on four health though, but they can only do three to me, so I'm not that worried about it. My biggest concern here is whether this guy is going to do an eye laser, because that move has invincibility. Other than that, I can outrange him no problem, like so. Thighs, eh, with a little bit off active there, but we got that. He also can swing the scythe at me, which does do good damage and has an insane hitbox, but I can beat it. Okay, cool, that'll work. Whew, scary stage. Missed the health up, almost missed the mutant power pickup for Pyros. That was, uh, <laughs> that was a thumper for sure, but we're still in there. Still deathless. Still on that first quarter. Yeah, still on that first life. <laughs> we're in there. So there's a number of strats that I can utilize here that I kind of go back and forth between. To go as fast as possible, it's most likely going to involve me having to take a death, and I'll be honest, I'd really rather not do that. I'd rather show off a little bit of safety, because the, the non-safe strats are pretty hazardous to one's health. Like, my two best times in this game, a 2038 and a 2050 respectively, both had a death, because I had to aggro the last part of the stage. I mean, I didn't have to, it's just I chose to, just for the sake of speed. But here, I think we're going to be a smidge bit safe. Uh, definitely wanted to hit that, but okay. Mutant powers are more or less necessary there just because turrets are such a huge hassle, especially when they're in that kind of grouping. That because that guy decides to turn around most of the time, and I'd rather just clean his clock before he can go. Bone breaker's all done, we've got our sentinels. These gold sentinels have a lot of health, so I prefer to save a save some wind for them. We've got four pink sentinels all with power-ups. We don't need all of them, so I'm only gonna collect the two mutant power stocks and one energy. We can't carry the, that with us. So this is a boss rush. We're going to be fighting five of the bosses of the game over again. 
this is part of the risky strats, is um, spawning multiple bosses at once. That's not good. Oh, uh, yeah, that's unfortunate. Okay, so we got rid of Blob. Took quite a bit of damage to get there. He I frames through that last hit of that combo and did four with that club swing, and that's never fun to have to deal with. This clown. With the exception of Emma, all of the re the refights have reduced health, so that's an advantage that we have. Emma's refight is actually pretty awful. Like it's to me the hardest refight. I did not want that to happen. I was talking earlier about her um, her con her counter hit being so degenerate, so I'm gonna have to flank a little bit here. Got some work to do. How did that miss you? No on first credit. Oh, okay. Alright, that's a death. That's unfortunate, but I can still power my way through this. I'm actually gonna do this. Gets rid of them, uh, now I can just fight uh, I can fight Nimrod solo. Or I can be right away from spawning Juggernaut. That's cool. Oh, those both miss me? Jeez. Got my lucky stars. Really needed to hit him. Okay, so this is the last boss of the raid fights. I'm gonna try and keep Juggernaut off to the left. Went back to the right. Sometimes he charges and I can't stop that, so we'll fight his fight. That's no problem. Let him come to us. Uh, didn't want that. Uh, get away from me. I think it's one more cycle for him. Okay. All that done, uh, we're gonna go fight Magneto, who we can outrange pretty well with our pokes. It does take a fairly long amount of time to be able to beat this boss. It's like, I think, nine cycles worth of hits. When he does that stop movement, that's the actual worst for sure. Uh, I'm gonna move down. See, with this attack, Storm has a much better chance of hitting if she's above the enemy, so you're gonna see me go above him out of habit, and it's also correct. Uh, that almost hit me. The kick is the most devastating move this boss has. It does three damage, and it causes hard knockdown, and they can set you up for another one. But oh no, it turns out it wasn't Magneto after all. It was Mystique, a known shapeshifter. As Xavier's about to tell us. So we're gonna go to this other place. And to start the Magneto fight, I'm actually going to get rid of his opening taunt by throwing that uh, mutant power, because it kills his shield. That's a classic. So, the biggest upside of this fight is Magneto just says all kinds of really crazy stuff that gets really funny really fast. Like, whoever voice acted him is, like, secretly a genius, and they probably weren't even aware of the kind of influence this game would have. Magneto's moveset is honestly really powerful. He has a fireball that does four damage. I don't want to ever get hit by that. He has some pretty solid melee moves. He has the kick that was retained from Mystique, which he can combo with, but it still only does three damage. If we ever get hit by shield, that's two damage. I'm actually going to wait this one out. This is a time drain, so, you know, it hurts the speed run and all, but I'd rather try to survive. Go around. Much like with the other bosses, we only need three hits for a knockdown, and then we just go from there. Hit him a little bit on the lower plane. There's that fireball I was talking about. That move is wild. Thunk, thunk, thunk. Quite a few cycles to kill him. I haven't actually counted out. I want to say it's like 9 or 10. But I'm just going to wait out the shield. When he gets a little bit lower, I'll start breaking shield again. But right now, I'm content to just let him do what he needs to do. Because we do get a free hit after the shield wears off. The shield has a... a what is it called? A committed duration? I'll do it now. Need to be careful here, though. I only have four health. He can kill me with a fireball, but uh, not too worried about that. Time will be coming up. We're getting to the last cycle. And I think this is going to be last cycle. Time. Whew. Big thumper after that stage seven with the uh, <laughs> with that death because Emma decided to be Emma. I, I legitimately think the, the refight against Emma Frost is... To me, the hardest boss fight in the game. It's just so silly and degenerate. But, uh, yeah, it was a good run. I'm very happy to be able to uh, be able to 1cc this for you folks today. Show out some some really cool strats that can both, A, save you time, and B, help you beat this game in a fast way. Thank you all so much for the GGs. I really appreciate every... Yo, Prism Lizard with that Twitch Prime sub. Thank you so much. All right, and I think it was like a the timer was something like a twenty one forty, but uh, yeah, it was it was a good run. I was my estimate was thirty, and I would have been happy with anything sub twenty five. So 
Anyway, uh, that's X-Men Arcade. Most of you know it. Hope I got to show off some cool stuff for you. And I, for those of you sticking around, please do consider contributing to the Bail Project this weekend. I will be doing so myself a little bit later. But for now, I'm going to turn it off to our next run, which is going to be The Joy of Kaizo. Beat the Devil Any Percent for the SNES. So again, Cali Phone Crew, thank you so much. And before I sign off, don't forget, Black Lives Matter. Have a great weekend. All right, awesome. Thank you so much. That run was intense, holy cow. Uh, I have a couple donations that came in. I was not able to read them during the run, but I'm gonna get them out, of out. Uh, let everybody hear them now. Uh, all of these amazing donations, again, going to the Bail Project. We've got $10.99 from Lat Mackey that says, good luck, Elrock, and thank you for supporting this important cause. And why does the Juggernaut have a gun? got a $30 donation from Avalonith with no comment. Thank you very much for that donation. And we have a $1 donation from Tempest Mask 1000 that says, Hey, J-Rock, I'm glad I caught the tail end of your practice run last night. What's neat is I actually went to my local comic store, which recently reopened before signing on to catch this right now. I didn't buy X-Men though. I got a Power Rangers issue. But uh, we're going to go ahead and put that to naming Magnemite Storm and Meowth Magoo. It was supposed to be Elrock. I, I, it says that, but I figured it was supposed to be Elrock. Yeah, Tempest, no but yeah, no <laughs> worries. I figured it might be a meme, so I didn't want to like not say it. So yeah. And all right, of coming up next, we have the joy of Kaizo with Electronic Logic and NecroSky90. So you got that to look forward to. Uh, we got so many more amazing runs uh, coming on up the rest of the day and really this entire weekend. Uh, if you want to check out the full schedule, use that command exclamation point schedule in chat and check it all out. Let me just run through a couple of uh, incentive updates. Uh, for our next donation incentive, uh, we are at $36.99 out of $500 to unlock the Lavender Secret incentive for Dusk. Uh, I believe that is like special content or an Easter egg that you can unlock for that run. Uh, sounds pretty cool. Uh, secrets are always neat, so we want to definitely get that met and check that out. Uh, when you are donating to that incentive, you can also donate to a bid war. Uh, we currently have five bid wars active, plus some naming incentives uh, that I uh, mentioned with that last donation. Uh, for bid wars, we have Pokemon Puzzle League, Pokemon Choice, top two win. Uh, currently, Bulbasaur is in the lead there with $48.69. Squirtle is in second place with $45, and Pikachu is in third place. Currently, the odd Pokemon out at only $2. Uh, we also have Mass Effect, Save or Kill the Council. Save the Council is currently winning $141 to $100.99. Uh, and you can also uh, choose male or female Commander Shepard. Uh, female Commander Shepard is currently up by quite a bit, $193 to $63.45. But we got plenty of time left before that run. Uh, and then later on in the weekend, we have a Fire Emblem Three Houses house bid war. Uh, currently, the Blue Lions are in the lead at $65. Uh, the Golden Deer are in second place, uh, $51.01. And the Black Eagles are in third at $40. So any, any of the three houses can win that. You can definitely put your donations towards uh, your favorite Fire Emblem Three Houses uh, house leader, be it Dimitri, Claude, or Edelgard. 
And then last but not least, we have Super Metroid, save or kill the animals. Uh, currently, save the animals is ahead by a little more than $400, uh, $1,355 to $931.81. Uh, so you can donate to all of those fantastic bid wars for our runs coming up later on this weekend, uh, as well as the donation incentives there. Uh, and your money is going towards the bail project. The Bail Project seeks to prevent pretrial incarceration and combat racial and economic disparities in the bail system. They provide bail for people in need, reuniting families, and restoring the presumption of innocence. Because bail is returned following trial, donations to the Bail Project's National Revolving Bail Fund can be recycled and reused to pay bail two to three times per year, maximizing the impact of every dollar you donate. To date, the Bail Project has paid the bail for over 10,000 people. For more information, you can visit them online at www.bailproject.org. And I'm pretty sure we're going to be getting, we're almost ready for Joy of Kaizo. So uh, my name is Moonblaze Wolf. Uh, once again, this is going to be my last shift of the weekend on the mic. Uh, I just want to say thank you again so much to everybody who donated to the Bail Project. Uh, Minneapolis is my hometown. So this, uh, this whole endeavor just means so much to me. Uh, you know, when everything was going on with uh, George Floyd and the riots and the protests and really just a lot of stuff that has been going on. Uh, in that community for a really long period of time. Uh, it hit really close to home uh, for me. And when I heard about this marathon going on uh, this weekend from my friends at Midwest Speed Fest, uh, I'm just very, very grateful that I was uh, had the opportunity to be involved in it. Uh, keep donating, keep uh, spreading the word, tell everybody that you know about this marathon happening all weekend long. Uh, we want to we want to hit our goal we want to raise a lot of money this weekend and make a difference and i know that's why we're all here that's what we all love to do as speedrunners and people that are in these communities uh, we want to use the uh, skills and talents that we have to make a difference in the world so uh, i know everybody is going to continue to do that all weekend long and i can't wait to see more amazing amazing runs as this marathon goes on uh, and just remember black lives matter so i'm going to be turning it over to sporadic erratic for the next hosting shift uh, we got our next run coming up soon. Uh, thank you so much again, everybody, for being here. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend. I am your host, Sporadic Erratic. I hope you have been enjoying Calithon, Stand Together, and I really need to mute my TV. There we go. There we go. So, <laughs> if you're just joining us, you're watching Calithon Stand Together, raising money for the Fail Project. Stand Together is being brought to you by the teams at Calithon, Midwest Speed Fest, and the Fast Force. Hey, what's up, Moonblaze? Whoa! So I'm really, really excited for this next run coming up. We have the Joy of Kaizo, and if you have not seen this game, like not only is it is it a Kaizo, is it Mario Kaizo, but it is Bob Ross themed Mario Kaizo with beautiful, beautiful painterly backgrounds, which I just recently learned they are actual Bob Ross paintings that have been digitized into the background of this uh, of this ROM hack. So it is really fun, beautiful to watch, and if that's not exciting enough for you, it's a race. Do I like seeing the what in the chat? Just to remind everybody why we are here right now, we are raising money for the Bail Project. The Bail Project seeks to prevent pre-trial 
incarceration and combat racial and economic disparities in the bail system. They provide bail for people in need, reuniting families, and restoring the presumption of innocence. Because bail is returned following trial, donations to the Bail Project National Revolving Bail Fund can be recycled and reused to pay bail two to three times a year, maximizing the impact of every dollar. That means your donations are just going to go so, so far to help people again and again and again. To date, the Bail Project has paid the bail for over 10,000 people. For more information, visit www.bailproject.org. I do believe it was mentioned earlier, but we have an incentive you can donate towards for the Dusk Lavender's Secret reveal. Now, Lavender's Secret is is the dev's baby. So if you want to see a, like, a really, really adorable incentive get met, please, when you donate, make sure that you click. We need $500. To reach that incentive and we're currently at $86.99 so need need to, we have a little ways to go on Dusk Lavender's Secret. Please get those donations in. Speaking of things that are coming up soon, in just a few hours we're going to have our Mass Effect run and there are two different vid wars going on for that particular speedrun. Of course, the first one being who the runner is going to play as, either Male Shepherd or Fem Shep. Fem Shep is in the lead at $193, but if you want to see Male Shepherd play, Get those donations in. We're sitting at 63.45, so you have to. We have to get over $100 to beat that particular. What am I just talking about? <laughs> so that somebody can play male chef instead of fem chef. And there is a second incentive going on for Mass Effect to save or kill the council. That one is a lot closer. It's only $40 up to save the council. So if you want to see that council bite it, get those donations in. Another bid war we have that is pretty neck and neck. Oh my gosh, it's only a $3.69 difference. Nice. Is the Pokemon Puzzle League Pokemon choice. So who do you like best? Bulbasaur, Squirtle, or Pikachu. I kind of like to see it spammed in the chat, actually. I'd like to see you spam your favorite Pokemon, but yeah, it has to be out of those three. Bulbasaur, I, my personal choice, I mean, like, I love water types, but Bulbasaur is just so cute. I mean, nobody picks Bulbasaur when you're starting, right? But I, I could never not pick Bulbasaur. It's just, like, so adorable. Yeah! Bulbasaur gang! <laughs> Bulbasaur gang versus Squirtle squad. Go! There's like zero love for Pikachu. There's also zero love for Pikachu in this bid war because there's only been $2 donated to have Pikachu be one of the starters. Poor Pikachu. Oh, they began the poke fight. All right, even more exciting news about Joy of Kaizo. Not only is it a Bob Ross 
themed Kaizo. Not only is it a race, but they have just upgraded it from any percent to 100%. That's right, more Kaizo for y'all because we love you. That's why. Hey, what's up, Wolfman2000? Nice to see you in the chat. Uh, I'd like to tell you all a little bit more about the Veil Project. It is a registered 501c3. This means your donations are tax deductible. And moreover, some employers may match your donations. So, if you are currently employed and you are donating, please talk to your employer and see if they will match your donations so we can raise even more funds for the bail project, 100% of your donations go straight into the bail relief pool. Bailproject.org offers many useful and insightful resources with facts and supporting documents and research. So please visit their website to learn more about bail bonds and the pretrial incarceration. 